Hey everyone, my name is Frontier Setter, and this is the HK USP, and it's wielder, Laura Croft. First things first, both guns have been checked. Everything is nice and clear. Safety first, my friends. So here it is, the USP, also known as the Universal Self-Loading Pistol. The USP is a semi-automatic hammer fire polymer frame pistol developed by the German defense manufacturing company Heckler & Koch. HK has made many innovative weapons throughout the years, and the USP is just one of the many that stand out. Prototype USPs were developed and tested for the offensive handgun weapon system requested by the U.S. SOCOM division, which pretty much ended up becoming the Mark 23 handgun, the one that we know today. Later on, USP designs were finalized, and this is what we have now. USPs come in many different flavors. The two I have here are the standard versions, and they also come in a compact frame size as well, as you can see here. There's also a bunch of other ones such as the Expert, the Match, the Elite, and Tactical versions as well. On top of that, each USP has different variants. Each variant means a different type of trigger and safety decocker lever setup. Since the USP was designed to be modular, all these components are pretty easy to switch out and each shooter can kind of tailor fit their own USP to their shooting habits or needs. USPs can be chambered in 9mm, 40 Smith & Wesson, as well as 45 ACP. The compact model can actually be chambered in 357 SIG. The magazines are polymer with steel enforced lips. With the exception of the 45 caliber mag, those are all full steel. There's also no magazine disconnect, which means if a round is chambered and there is no magazine inside, the gun can still be fired. Mags will always drop free when the paddle is engaged. The mag release is in the back of the trigger guard here and is completely ambidextrous. The trigger guard is very large and this helps the shooter when shooting with gloved hands. All the control levers are pretty prominent, again helping in operation when gloved. The USP is known for its unmatched reliability. The gun has passed several rigorous torture tests and is able to eat any kind of ammo you feed it, whether it be your simple range ammo, plus P ammo, steel cased, even ammo that you have made yourself, this gun will eat it up and it'll shoot and it will always be reliable. I've put thousands of rounds through my USP compact, which is my current concealed weapon of choice, and has never failed me once. They are also accurate as hell and fun to shoot. The recoil is easily mitigated because the large grip gives you a firm purchase on the gun. Not to mention, the large slide takes a lot of the brunt of each round. And now, on to some Tomb Raider history. Now if you don't already know, Lara Croft is the main protagonist of this gaming franchise. The series was originally developed in 1996 by Core Design and then passed on to Crystal Dynamics and Eidos Interactive. There have been a bunch of incarnations of Lady Croft, uh, this stems from the original classic timeline to the first reboot, which is known as the Legend timeline, and then on to what we have now, which is the Survivor timeline. The story can get kind of muddled, especially with the different movies, the comics, and other media flowing around, but the character pretty much remains the same. To sum it up, Laura is beautiful, intelligent, and athletic. She was always portrayed as a brunette with her hair in a braid or a ponytail, and usually wears a tank top, combat boots, and a backpack. She can speak several different languages and is extremely knowledgeable in the history, artifacts, and cultures of lost civilizations. For continuity's sake, she is always in some sort of plane crash or sinking ship and needs to survive in the wilderness. 
This demonstrates her resourcefulness and adaptability, but more so her willpower and determination, which I think are pretty much the same thing. In many of the games, she uses gymnastic style moves to get around in the environment as well as dodge enemy gunfire and pretty much help her not get eaten. In Tomb Raider 3, you can actually go around in her manor and use kind of her gymnastics training equipment. It's actually Excellent. pretty cool. In the Angelina Jolie Tomb Raider movies, her weapon of choice is the dual USPs. This first came from the Tomb Raider game Angel of Darkness, the last game in the original timeline. Later on in the Legend timeline, she still carried on with this weapon loadout. The real life models for Tomb Raider Legend and Tomb Raider Underworld are Karima Adabib and Allison Carroll. Both of them use USPs during their interviews and photo shoots. To be honest, I don't know whether it's the weight of the boots or whether it's the heaviness of the holsters. This sort of strange thing happens to me. The arms go up, the elbows go out, the back stands straight. I turn into Lara. All the boys love her. But the great thing is she's got lots of female fans for the fact that she's intelligent and she's strong and she's just as witty and clever. Lara is beautiful both in and out. Can't get any better than that. The challenges of becoming Lara Croft. She's amazing. She's confident, she's got the physicality, she's got that attitude that she, when she wants something, she's gonna get it. For me to take on that is quite a huge responsibility, really. Fortunately for me, I've had my gymnastic background, so I'm a trained gymnast. I've done rock climbing, abseiling, everything. I'm, I'm a bit of a, an adventurous girl, so yes, it has been demanding but I'm definitely out for the challenge. Pretty much solidifying that the USP is Laura's main weapon. Finally, the new movie that's coming out starring Alicia Vikander also shows Laura dual wielding the USP. I'll take two. However, the Tomb Raider USPs are match grade. They come with the good stainless steel slide, the compensator weights, the jet funnels, the competition sights, you know, the whole shebang. I'm glad they brought back her old classic pistols, and they didn't cheapen it by giving her some kind of bullshit Terran tactical Gucci Glock. I'm looking at you, John Wick 2. I know of your past fondness for the German varietals, but I can wholeheartedly endorse the new breed of Austrians, Glock 34 and 26. As I said before, these two are the vanilla versions of the USP. The 9mm version I have here has a day code of KD, which means it was produced in 1993. And the 40 Smith & Wesson version here I have has a day code of KE, which means it was made in 1994. So they're pretty much the same gun, except for some slight improvements in the next year. The recoil spring is now captive. The barrel diameter is obviously different because of the different round. Uh, let's see here, the rifling, uh, they went from a traditional barrel rifling to a polygonal grooved rifling. And the sights are slightly different as well. The front post in the newer models is, is a little smaller. So the biggest difference is actually within the slide. This is due to the difference in calibers. As you can see in the 9mm versions, there's a big chunk milled out in the back to lighten the weight. The USP was designed ground up to be chambered in the 40 Smith & Wesson round. This means the slide and the overall construction of the gun is very robust to handle that extra kick. And since 9mm doesn't have as much oomph, they milled out the back of the slide to shave off some weight and control the cycling. A lot of people harp on the USP, because it doesn't have this standardized 1913 Picatinny rail. Well, the fact is, HK developed three separate handgun lines, the P2000, the P30, and the VP9 series, and I guess the VP40, and all of those have this 1913 Picatinny rail. The USP was designed at a time when these accessory rails were pretty much non-existent on pistols. So they were amongst the first, if not the first, to have this feature. So come at me. Both of these USPs are variant 1, which means their decocker and safety lever is on the left side. And they are both double action, single action pistols. They feature standard three dot sights with a combat sight picture. Combat sight picture means your point of aim is your point of impact. So whatever you want to hit, you hover that front dot right over the bullseye. Disassembly is pretty simple. You remove the mag, check the chamber if it's clear, line up the slide with the pin, pull the pin out, take the slide out, Take the recoil spring out, and then take the barrel out. Pretty simple stuff. So if you can't already tell, I'm a huge Heckler & Koch fanboy. The USP is a fantastic weapon, one that I wouldn't mind going to hell and back with. I'm also a huge fanboy 
of the Tomb Raider games. I've been playing these games ever since I was a young boy. I still have the games in the original cases, as well as all the strat guides to boot. When's the last time you saw a Prima strategy guide? I honestly think Laura prefers HK as well. I mean, if you're going to have a gun that handles all the elements, why not have two of them? The design is very reminiscent of the 90s. All the angles and edges are very sharp and pronounced. You can tell that the gun was from another era of design language. I feel like the USP and Laura are one and the same. They are both elegant, exude a sense of excellence, and most importantly, are very low poly in design. It's high class, it's high quality, it's HK. I hope you found this video insightful and enjoyable. I also hope the new Tomb Raider movie doesn't suck ass. If you like this kind of content, please like the video, comment down below, and subscribe to my channel. I respond to every comment, so feel free to tell me what you want to see next, and ask me any questions that you might have. And always remember to stay tactically kawaii. I can't reach. <laughs>